chapter 8, please. So we're going to start uh, a new topic, a new series. It's, a, it's some of what I've taught about before because it's something that really excites me. Um, it's, it really comes down to who God created us to be. Because, you know, for years people have lived at somebody else's expectation or according to what somebody else has said about you. We've lived according to what we think we're supposed to be. But God has this master plan of why he created us and who he created us to be. And I believe if we just get a glimpse of this, a revelation of who God says we are, it'll change everything about you. You, your health, your family, your businesses, your outlook on life. And everything. Amen. But we, we it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crazy topic. Because some of the things I'm going to say, you're like, no way, Jose. But it's true. Now, I'm going to make you think a little differently. I'm going to throw some, some of my theological ideas out. Because I am a Greek scholar. I am Greek. Let's put it that way. I, I lie with the rest of that. Psalm chapter 8, let's go there. Let's start there and take a look. I'm going to give you some new thoughts, new ideas. You know, every day we we don't know the word the way we're supposed to know it. And and every day God gives us insight, revelation. You know, because the word is so deep, the Bible says, there's so much. We're still going to learn stuff in heaven. So Psalm chapter 8, we'll start in verse, I'll start in verse 1 because it's such a great psalm. David wrote this. David, I love what David wrote. David, if you think you've got issues, think about how, what David went through. Just tried, he was tried, uh, they tried to kill him. They called him a traitor. He lived in a cave for a while. His kids revolted against him. His wife uh, was jealous of him. And, you know, she watched him dance before the Lord and said, look at you. You're a fool. And he says, oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. He danced his clothes off, the Bible says. She mocked him. Psalm chapter 8, verse 1. O Lord, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. Now watch verse 3. This is where it begins. He's kind of sitting back. He says this, when I consider or when I think about your heavens and the work of your fingers, in other words, when I look up and and I just kind of like look at the solar system, you know, these days we have so many lights on, you really can't see the magnificence of the heavens. Because think about this, the Bible says that he gave those lights for when it's dark, those lights are supposed to light up the earth. We put artificial lights to light up. We were supposed to be led. The moon was supposed to be our light at night. But we put all these lights, and we don't even see the glory of God in the heavens. The stars would be amazing if we shut all the lights off and no pollution. So think about it. He's looking up. There's no street lights, And he goes, when I consider, when I think about just the work of your finger, the stars, Watch this, the moon. Then he says this, who am I? What is man that you are mindful of him? He says, and the son of man that you visit him. For you have made him a little lower than the angels. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands And you have put all things under his feet. We sing a song, who am I that you are mindful of me, right? Yeah, you done? I got to preach. Thank you. Someday. You know, I compliment her singing, and then she just doesn't stop. I want you to think about this. He says, he says, who am I? What is man that you are mindful of him, that you have made him a little lower than the angels? Now, let me say this. It is incorrectly translated 
in the Bible. The word angels here is Elohim. It is not angels. So Elohim is the word for God. So he says, who is man that you are mindful that you have made him a little lower or one step down from God? We're not lower than angels. Although they may excel in strength and they fly around the universe, God says, I've made you just a little lower than me. We're above angels. We will judge angels. Angels work for us. Okay, read the, Bi I'm, read the Bible. Angels work for us. They are ministering spirits that serve the heirs of salvation. They serve us. They serve God. God, they can't reproduce. They can't marry. They just obey. So they work for us. We, God gave us free will to love, to choose, to do things, to create. They can't create anything. He says he made us. They, they can inherit. We can inherit. Angels can't. Anyway, he says, I made you just a little lower than God. That's divinity. Number two, hold on. Look at this. He says, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. That's dignity. And you have made him to have dominion over all the works of your hands. God, there's three things here. Divinity, dignity, and dominion. Write those down. Divinity, dignity, and dominion. Those are three things God did for us. He made us divine. Not, we're not God, but we have the nature of God. He gave us dignity. That'll just ruin your self-esteem issues, your low self-esteem issues. He crowned us with glory and honor. And he gave us dominion. Genesis chapter 1. Let's go there. Now this may be kind of repeat. Genesis chapter 1. So let's reconsider. I'm going to teach a little bit, preach a little bit. I hope you get excited. I hope you show some emotion. This would be a good place to show emotion. Amen? Listen, when your wife walks out of the shower, it's not the only place you show emotion. Whoa. Whoa, man. You should show emotion, not that kind of emotion, but show emotion here. Hey, God showed up. God's in the house. Woo! Praise Jesus. And you know, when she wakes up and there's, you know, stuff growing down, one eye's closed, hair's up here. Whoa! Another place to show emotion. Genesis 1-6. Praise Jesus. Watch this. Then God... Think about what David's saying. David was such a great thinker. He would sit around and say, man, God, you're amazing. I, I just look at the stars and just say, whoa, wow, what did you do? How did you make that? And then you made us. 126 says, then God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. That's divinity. God made us as divine as he could without making us God. Think about that. God has created you to be the pinnacle of everything he's ever done. You are the apex of his creation. Think about this. God made everything else, and then he says, okay, let me make man. I don't need to. This is, the, this is my last thing. We're the last thing he created. I'm going to make man, and I'm going to put him over everything I've made. Put him in charge of everything. This scripture says that we are just like God. Not God, but just like him. Divine in nature. I'll show you some scriptures that say that we have the divine nature in us. Divine in nature. So you need to start thinking of yourself. Man, God made me to be just like him. I've, I am not the thing my grandmother said I was. Not what my dad said I was. Not what my uncle said I was. I am who God says I am. Amen. God said he made me just a little lower than him with all his attributes, his all his divine nature and his, his likeness and, and his image and his dignity and his dominion. Watch this. I'm going to get you excited. 
Verse 2. Look at verse 2. Go back to verse 2. Verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, this is Genesis 1-1. There's a Genesis 1-0 that says God. So this is just 1-1 that says in the beginning God created because before the beginning, God. Anyway, it says he created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. Now, if you study Scripture, there's God never creates darkness. God never creates anything without form. The Bible says there is no darkness in him. There's nothing but light. So we know from studying this out that the earth was destroyed for some reason, and we know why, but something happened that the earth became without form and void or a wasteland, and there was darkness on the face of the deep. The deep is the word for what? Water, correct? When you say launch out into the deep, we're always talking about water. So if there's darkness on water, what happens to water? It freezes. It turns to ice, the ice age. The ice age is real. The earth is who knows how many billions of years old. I don't care how old it is. I know that when God began to recreate, it was 6,000 years ago. Amen. I could teach you this, but we're only 6,000 years old. No, there is no 100,000-year-old fossil that looks like us. Evolution is impossible, and I'll show you from Scripture. And I'll show you from science, too. So, look at this. So, God begins to recreate the earth because something happened. Something ruined the earth. Go to Isaiah 14. <sighs> Isaiah 14. You've got to have to stay with me. Put your ears on fast. Isaiah 14. Actually, go to, well, yeah, you go to Isaiah 14. I'll give you a different scripture first. Isaiah 14. Now, in Matthew, you don't have to turn. Matthew 6.10, it says this, that, the, you know, the Lord's Prayer, we say, you know, Lord, that kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God has always intended the earth to be like heaven. Earth is a snapshot of what heaven looks like. The Garden of Eden, if you, if you read Revelation, the Garden of Eden, the beauty, the splendor, the tree of life, the river, is also in heaven. Remember Jacob, Jacob's ladder? He said he saw angels ascending and descending. So in other words, earth is in a relationship is in a relationship with heaven. And whatever happens on heaven is happening on earth. God intended earth and heaven to work together. And if you remember a couple weeks ago, I said this. I said, the reason why God wants the earth perfect and Jerusalem or the garden perfect is because one day he's coming to live here. That's what it says in Revelation, right? He will come here. He will set up his throne in Jerusalem. He will be the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And he will tabernacle with man. In other words, he will dwell and live with us. So God wants this earth to look good. Because he, he plans on living here one day. Okay, think about this. Now, so what happened? Isaiah 14, ready? Uh, verse 13, uh, 12. It says, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Watch this. I will be like the most high. All I could say is I, 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 I. <laughs> Think about this. He said, look at the last thing he thought. I will be like God. Think, think of what he thought. The Bible says he had a thought. He didn't even have a conversation with God. He had a thought. And Jesus says in Luke, he says, he says, oh, I was there when Satan was cast out from heaven. It was like lightning. He said, Satan had a thought, and God said, you're gone. Oh, let me say that again. God creates this guy named Lucifer, this angel. He has built-in musical instruments. And every time Satan breathes, he plays music because God loves music. He has, the Bible says he has pipes built into his body. He has uh, uh, t t timbrels, pipes, uh, all these instruments. 
And so the wind blows and music comes out of him. And God's like, yes, that's why I created you. And God said, I created you to be the best angel. You're the, the, you're the top. And then, and then Satan has, Lucifer has a thought. And God said, no, you don't. Bam, you're out of here. Don't even think you're like me. And he says he cast him out so fast it was like lightning. And lightning travels like 1.4 gigawatts, right? I don't know. It's fast. It's really fast. Gone. He's gone. God don't mess around. Don't even think you're like him. Now watch this. He banishes him to earth. Ready? He banishes, right? We know that. Why? Because we find him in the garden. Now, I got a problem. So God sends, banishes Satan to earth, and then he makes us to live here with him. Yeah. I got a problem with that. It's almost like a sick joke. Seriously, think about it. I mean, I really have a problem with that. And I said, wait a minute, God. I, 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 why do you put us here with this guy? And I said to myself, and I read it over and over, not once did God tell Adam, watch out, Satan lived here. Not once. You know, like I tell you know, we give our kids the this, this stranger talk, right? Don't talk to strangers. When you walk home, you walk straight home. Anybody says anything to you, you take their plate number and you tell me I will kill them. Right? We, we give them the stranger talk because we don't want our kids around strangers. But God didn't say anything to Adam. All he said was, here's the garden. You keep it and you guard it. He didn't say, but there's a guy named Satan out there. Never said it. I don't see it in Scripture. So I'm saying, God, you put us here with this guy who ate our lunch. I don't get it. But then watch this. Genesis 126. Watch this. To me, it's an even sicker joke. Watch this. No, me, I'm going to have a talk with God. I'm, I've already made an appointment. I don't know, 50 years from now, he's booked. I've got on his Outlook calendar. 50 years from now, Lord, I need to ask you a few questions. Number one, why is it when I turned 40, hair started growing out of my ears? That's number one. And it doesn't stop. I don't get it. That's one question. And the nose, you know, the whole thing. And this is next on my list of questions. But watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Satan said, I will be like the Most High. Watch this. I will be like God. And God said, no, you don't. Bam, you're down on earth. And then God goes, I'm going to create someone like the Most High. I'm, he, he says, no, 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 no. You don't tell me who you are. I tell you who you are. You want to be like the most guy? <laughs> Let me create somebody who is like me. And he made man in his image and his likeness. And it says, and he gave him dominion over all the works of his hands. In other words, God said this, oh, yeah, Satan? I'll make somebody, and you have to serve him. So God gets, don't mess with God. He just didn't banish him. He said, now I'm going to make somebody who is, so every day of your rotten, stinking life, Satan, you're going to look at me, and that man that I create is going to be your boss. You are subject to him. You think you're like the most high? Let me show you what I can create. <sighs> Listen, the Bible says, 1 Peter 5 says this, that, that Satan is not God's enemy. God doesn't have any enemies. Satan had a thought, and he was gone. No one can stand up to God, but God said now that he is your enemy. He's our enemy. We have to battle him. Okay, let's move on. Amen. Amen. Watch this. You getting anything yet? Yeah. Praise Jesus. 
Hallelujah. So, so God does this. God does this. He creates us. Look at verse 1, Genesis 1, He said, God, let us make man in our image, our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the cattle, over every creepy thing, all the creeps on the earth. Satan's a creep. So God created man in his image and created in the image of God. He created him, male and female. He created them. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis 2, verse 7. Watch this. If you're right there, you don't have to turn pages. I hear pages going, why? Where are you? <laughs> verse 7. God now, here's how he created man. He took dust. God rolled up his sleeves. He took dust. Dust from the ground, right? Remember he says, from dust we came, dust we shall return. That's our human side. Right? L think, listen, that's our human. This is our human side. When this thing expires, the divine side goes to heaven. We're trapped. The divine is trapped in this human. This is just a shell. Amen? Amen. That's all it is. It's a shell. It's going to go away. It's going to go back to the earth where it came. That's why we bury people in the ground. Why? Because the ground we came. Now, I know some people will have a cremation. It doesn't matter. You're still going back to the ground. All right? And so God picks up the, the natural side, the human side, right? And then he says in verse 7, he says this. He says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and watch what he did. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. That's the divine side. Now, uh, I, I was really praying about DNA and, and asking God to teach me about DNA. And Monday night on the Sci-Fi Channel, they had a whole thing of DNA, a whole teaching of, and I was, I was like, wow, this is awesome. Morgan Freeman was on, and he's doing the narration. And here's a couple of things I learned about DNA, and you've got to understand why this is important. DNA is just a, you know the double helix? Everybody ever see the, what it looks like? It's, it's, it's a double helix, and it's a long strand. In it, there are three billion, like, connections. Three billion in one strand of DNA. Think about it. Uh, Jack, uh, any other doctor, scientist in here? No. There are three billion strands, like connections, in one strand of DNA. One long strand is a chromosome. Okay? And, and sections of that are called genes. And you know they had the Human Genome Project, correct? And the Human Genome Project was to find, ready? markers of cancer, of diseases, right? They found the, the cancer gene. They found the recessive, like, you know, why you have blue eyes as opposed to brown eyes. The genes dictate that. And, you know, recently, like, Angelina Jolie had a test, and they found they can't, that she carries the breast cancer gene, and she had her breast cut off. But so, she, cause so she didn't want to get breast cancer. So they're doing some amazing things. I think that's extreme. But, but in these genes, there are things called markers. I'll get back to that in a minute. But, but you take, uh, uh, there's 22 pairs, 23 pairs of chromosomes in every person. The last pair is the X and the Y, or XX. It's the sex chromosome, whether you're a guy or a girl, okay? And it's, and it's true for everybody. Now, here's the thing that's interesting. 99.99% of all of our genes are identical. Identical. They're all the same. That's why when they say they found the cancer gene, it'll be the same in everybody. But that 0.01% is what makes us unique. That 0.01% is what makes everyone in this room, in the whole world, totally unique. It's amazing. It's as unique as your fingerprint, right? There's no two fingerprints alike. Do you know that there's no two voice prints alike? Voice print is also very unique. It identifies you. Your fingerprint identifies you, ready? And your DNA identifies you. Now, here's the interesting thing. Lately, they've been doing CSI is huge. Why? Because they find one cell 
one cell from skin has the same DNA in the rest of your body. But there's 0. .00001 something, a, a marker in there that tells that cell it's a skin. And it's in your hand. As opposed to it being in your liver. Fascinating. DNA is fascinating. Now here's the thing that, that, that Morgan Freeman said. He said DNA is amazing. And there's one thing science cannot figure out. It's how DNA replicates itself. How it kind of splits and copies itself. Because we, if, if DNA didn't copy itself, we couldn't come into being. Right? The reason why we have kids is because DNA copies itself. Right? You get one chromosome from your mom and from your dad, and they just go down the line. Now, here's the interesting thing. He says, we don't understand how. What is this life inside of DNA? He goes, if you believe God, then it must be God, but science will figure out how it does it. I was like, <laughs> dummy. But, but the interesting thing about DNA is this. When I got off the, the plane from Guatemala last year, there was a big sign. I, told, I think I told Frank, there was a big sign. And it's from one, a bank, American bank, and it says, your DNA is your unique identifier. I'm like, hmm, mark of the beast. In that show, there's a scientist that created artificial DNA. And the reason why he created artificial DNA is he says, he goes, if there's three billion pieces of information in one strand, which you can't see into the microscope, it's so small, you can only see it when it's replicating. Otherwise, you can't see DNA, uh, the helix. He says, he says if it's if that small, imagine how much data we can store in there. Imagine how much information we can store in a human DNA. Imagine how we can identify people and won't need passwords, usernames, social security cards. Oh my. Because there are markers in DNA. Mark of the... My opinion, and I'll explain it in a second because it gets really good is that your DNA, think about this, think about this. When Adam was created, God breathed into him. God gave Adam his DNA. Adam fell, and his DNA was corrupt, right? Because then sickness came in. Our DNA was perfect. Sickness came in. Something happened. DNA started to crumble and fall apart. And now we have the reason why you get sick is because there's something wrong. With your D there's a DNA gene, something wrong. Ready? The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His only begotten son. The word begotten in Greek is gene. God put Jesus in this earth to put his genes back in us. So he can insert his DNA back into humanity. Oh. Ready? Oh, I got so much. I'll, I'll, I'll end quick. I guess I'm going to fly out the window. <laughs> this is really good. Think about this. Think about this. When Satan made, made Adam and Eve. Oh. Genesis chapter 3. I got to slow down. Genesis chapter 3. Look at this. Whew. Amen. Genesis chapter 3. Verse. Are you with me? Verse 8. Well, verse 7. Adam and Eve sinned. Verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them were opened. They knew they were naked. Their dignity was stripped from them. Their divinity was stripped from them. And their dominion was taken away. Three things the devil took. God gave us divinity, dignity, dominion, and Satan came and stole all three. Then the eyes of both of them were opened. They knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, made coverings of themselves. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. That's why God is cool. Because he hangs out in the cool of the day. Come on now. Okay, watch this. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, God, among the trees of the garden. They hid from his presence. And the Lord God called to Adam and said, where are you? And Hebrew literally says, why are you where you're at? He yelled at them. It's not like, hey, where, where, where are you, God? God knows where they are. He's God. He's not stupid. God knew where they were at, but he actually, the Hebrew is very, very specific. 
he yelled at them. He said, why are you where you're at? Why? They lost their divinity, their dignity, and their dominion. And he says, why did you get there? You ever talk to your dog? Why did you do that? You know why they did it. You. God did the same thing to Adam and Eve. He says, why? Why? What I gave you. You let him take it away. You had dominion over him. He had nothing on you. Now he's become your enemy for the rest of your life. <coughs> okay, where was I? Oh, okay, let me, let me, I'm going to end. First Peter, uh, second Peter, chapter one. Okay, second Peter, chapter one. Okay, so uh, as you're turning there, let me tell you a little, let me, let me just update you. God, we, we give everything over to Satan. He comes in. God made us over him to punish him. And Satan says, no, you don't. He grabs man. And then God says, he says, from the seed of the woman, Satan, I'm going to crush you. Genesis 3.15. So now Satan says, oh, really? He says, so now he starts to destroy. He, he tries to kill every kid or destroy the bloodline. How? Remember what he does with Moses. He tried to kill Moses. He tried to kill Jesus, right? They tried to kill all the kids. In Genesis chapter 6, Satan, the sons of men, it, um, excuse me, the sons of God, angels, came down and perverted the bloodline. How? I don't know, but they had sex with women, and the Bible says they created giants or ungodly men. Goliath is an offspring of those giants. Okay? Now, and what Satan will do is he will have a son called the Antichrist. How is he going to do it? He will impregnate a woman. Why? Because he wants his DNA in the earth. Now, let me say this, and I'm going to end. Maybe not. Lord, forgive me for lying. Listen, what they said on this sci-fi channel blew me away. He said they are trying to create super DNA that is resistant to diseases and make a superhuman. Now, I sat there and I said, Lord, there's something to this. That science is trying to make something that you already created that was destroyed, but something superhuman. Listen, once DNA is injected, it can't leave. It splices to your DNA. It's done for life. So I said this, I said, what is it about the mark of the beast that if they get it, why can't they remove it? If it's a tattoo, I'll just get rid of it. I'll cut my hand off. I, I mean, I'll cut the skin off. Or if it's a chip, I'll just remove the chip. I said to myself, it's got to be something that you cannot remove. I believe this. Satan is coming up with this, with his DNA that he will eventually inject. Listen, up till now, all the vaccines are just antiviral, right? They give you the disease, it fights, and it creates. Uh, until now, they've not injected DNA into your body. Call me crazy. I don't care. Because there's got to be something that he does that you cannot get rid of it. You can't repent of it. It changes you forever and you cannot come back. And there are markers. Anyway, 2 Peter chapter 3. I know, call me nuts. It's okay. I've been called better. I know who I am in Christ. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Look, it says, as, he has, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which we have been given exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature or the divine DNA, having escaped corruption that is in the world through lust. Isn't it amazing that when you're in Christ, the Bible says you are a totally different person than you ever were? 
that all things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. I believe this. Yes, me, my, maybe my human DNA is corrupt, but my spiritual DNA is divine. God said, I got to inject I got to inject Christ's DNA into the earth. How did he do it? Whoever believes in him. <sighs> whoever believes in Christ. Whoever believes is a new creature, it says. He did, he's a new creature. In other words, the divine lives in me. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. He said he's made us overcomers, more than conquerors, the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, blessed and not cursed. And that's why he says, if you speak to these diseases, guess what? The genes start to go, pop, 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 pop. whoa, life of God. Come on, folks. God made us divine with dignity. He gave it all back to us through Christ. You can, and then he says this. He says, he says this. It's, he, David said, who is the son of man? All of us are sons of men. But then he says this, whoever believes in him, he's given them the power to become the sons of God. I rest my case. We can become sons and daughters of God again through his divine nature. I believe something divine is working on the inside. I believe the greater one is just bubbling up inside of us. And when we get filled up with his spirit, it penetrates. It kills cancer in our bodies. It kills diabetes. It kills all these ungodly diseases. I'm not saying you're not going to die. It's a point every, to every person to die once and then the judgment. This body will decay. But while you're here, he says, you can live a good life, overcoming every obstacle. Thank you, Lord. Who am I that you are? Hit it. Who, who am I? You are mindful of me. That you hear me when I call. 